Good morning, and welcome back to Tool Crow's Homestead. This is Shelly. It is super early on Tuesday morning, um, and this is after Labor Day. So, it has been a hot minute since we have posted a video, and I'm very sorry about that. Um, things have been kind of hectic around here. And then with the holiday, we spent time with family, got a lot of jobs done around the homestead, and um, I just realized that I never put out a video finishing up the um, uh, Every Bit Counts Challenge. And um, so I just wanted to let you know about that. And um, I'm going to insert that at some point in this. <laughs> um, but basically, the last few days of the month were spent rendering lard. Um, so, Randy and I have, um, started a soap making business, and, um, if you saw Permapasture Farm at their live video, and I'll post a link to that below, their live video, um, was, uh, I just had a jar not seal. I've never had that happen before. I'm standing here cleaning off my jars and um, I canned some, I had a bunch of tomatoes and I canned some more tomato sauce in quart jars and I had a jar not seal. So I'm gonna stick this one in the fridge. Um, I'll post a link to the video down below. Um, Billy from Permapasture Farm did a live video highlighting um, women who have their own small business from their homestead. Um, so, uh, Randy and I have been spending a lot of time making soap. Um, <clears throat> also I'll put a link down below for our website and you can go and order, but I will warn you that, um, supplies are selling out. So, um, that's a good problem to have, right? Um, so yeah, and I, I also, even though this didn't fall in the um, month of August, I did make some um, roasted tomatoes because I actually, my family, I have a recipe for tortellini soup that my family loves. And um, one of the things that I put in that is roasted potato, or potatoes, roasted tomatoes. It's early, y'all. Um, so, I thought, I, I should can, I've, I've still got tomatoes coming in in the garden. And um, I thought I should can some roasted tomatoes for that recipe because we love to have that, especially through the cooler months, um, just because it's one of those yummy comfort foods. But um, I shot a little bit of the video of how to do it. Um, I did not get to the part where you can it, so um, just FYI, this is, um, these get a half inch head space, and um, the, I, count it, I can these in pints, so that means it gets one tablespoon of um, lemon juice, and I put a half a teaspoon of salt in the bottom of it. You don't have to add the salt, I just did it for flavor, um, but the uh, and then you can them the quart size or the pint size you can for 35 minutes in a water bath and if you're doing quarts it's 45 minutes in a water bath so um if you you know want to make this it smells amazing just because they were i roasted them in the oven um and with the whole roasting in the oven thing you just got to keep an eye on them and you know when they get to the point where you can peel that skin off of them they're ready to go so um yeah um and I have, when I get home from work tonight, I will take the skins out of the dehydrator. And, um, but you'll see that in the video. <laughs> so anyway, um, we do have a couple other videos coming up. And um, Randy built a, uh, a new pig waterer for our pigs. Um, I'm not sure yet if they figured out how to use it. <laughs> because they're not used to drinking out of that. But um, we'll take a look at that and get a video out for you showing you how we did that. And this is going to be another hectic week. Um, 
but yeah, I'll try to get those videos out to you. All right, we are rolling into the final few days of August, and that's the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And um, so today, I have pork fat, and I'm gonna render it down and make lard. And um, so <clears throat> I haven't, I'm getting ready to leave to go to work. I got up this morning and chunked this up. And um, this is easier to cut up when it's really cold and you have a really sharp knife. So um, I'm gonna stick this back in the fridge and then um, I'm gonna leave a note for Randy to stick it in the crock pot a few hours before I come home from work. And then when I get home from work, it'll be ready to strain and put into containers and stick in the freezer. So that's what I got going on today. So the pork fat has been cooking on low for about, well, I'm gonna say about an hour and a half now. Um, and it's kind of decreased by about half. This was almost full when it started. So um, we're just gonna keep it on low and keep it cooking down until we get what we want. I just spent all kinds of time recording something and I wasn't even recording. <laughs> so anyways, I'm getting ready to go to bed. Um, but I've got to strain this um, lard and I wanted to show you what I'm doing there. So um, give me just a second. All right, so this is the lard. And um, this is not completely done because there's still some big chunks of fat in there that need to um, cook down. However, I did not want to leave this in the crock pot all night long because I don't want it, I don't want it to cook. You don't want this to be like, um, you know, full on cooking. You want it warm enough that it's melting the fat, but not so much that it's cooking the fat, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why it's kind of a long process to do this. You can either put it in a crock pot and do it, or you can put it in you know, like a, a Dutch oven or something like that and stick it in your oven and just put it on low and, you know, let it cook for a long time. Sometimes when, um, if we take the, the fat instead, cause like this morning, the video that you just saw, I, I chunked it up, right? So if I run it through our, um, grinder, our meat grinder, um, it actually doesn't take as long because it's like, broken it up into little bitty pieces but doing it this way it takes a little bit longer so what I'm going to do I'm going to strain this and then I'm going to um, leave these big chunks in here stick that in the fridge and then when Randy comes home tomorrow he's going to put it back on the crock pot and continue rendering it um, and he's going to add a bunch of we have like uh, three more five pound bags of pork fat that need to be rendered so um, he's going to add another bag to this and, and just continue this process until we get all of this done. Um, the way that I'm going to do this, so I have these containers that I put it in. And then um, I've got a sieve. And then I have cheesecloth on top of that. And I'll strain it through those things and fill up the containers and stick them in the fridge. And that's what we're going to do. So we are winding down the um, Every Bit Counts Challenge and um, you know, getting that done. In the last couple days, I've done things like green beans and drying cayenne peppers and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna put that in the video because you've seen me do that. Um, I do, I have been picking tomatillos. I planted a bunch of tomatillos, but the harvest is coming in kind of slow. And um, I wanna make um, tomatillo salsa. I love tomatillo salsa at the Mexican restaurant. Um, and I'm not sure, I think that might be called like salsa verde or something like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I need to go look at the recipe, but, um, that's not going to happen before August is over. I'm not going to have all of those in. I've still got them growing out there and I'm kind of picking them as they, you know, start busting through their husks. So, um, I may, be, I may make a video of that, like how to make, um, tomatillo salsa. So, um, yeah. And I still want to, well, I'm just rambling now. So I'm going to strain this lard and I'm going to go to bed and I will see you tomorrow. So one thing that I want to show you, um, as you're doing this, you know, like I said, I had big chunks that were still left in there that weren't rendered down. You'll have to empty this out into another container or whatever. Um, 
because this will gum up your thing pretty quick. But I just wanted to show you real quick. That's what I'm getting after I strain it out. It's pretty clean. Really awesome. Love it. So this is kind of outside of the um, Every Bit Counts challenge because we're in September now. Um, I spent the last three days, as you saw in the previous shot, that I spent the last three days of August rendering lard. So, um, but I wanted to show you this. I've never done this before, but um, so basically I'm making roasted tomatoes and um, I make a tortellini soup that takes, um, that I like to put these kind of tomatoes in. And um, so basically you just cut them in half, you take the core off, you cut them in half, you put them in the oven and roast them like on the broiler. I turn mine on low and it takes, I don't know, roughly an hour. I had three pans going, so I was kind of rotating them and checking them every 30 minutes to make sure they weren't burnt up. Um, but what happens is um, I will then, or right now, I will go through and take these skins off and I'm gonna put them on this tray and they will go in the dehydrator and the tomato will go um, into this pot. And these will, I'll go through with, you know, a spatula or something and kind of chop them up, but I want it to stay kind of chunky because that's what it calls for for that recipe. And um, that's how I want it to be. Um, and then I will take, let me just show you. Um, I will go in and put the trays in my dehydrator with the skins on them. And when they get dried out, I will crush them up. And then I can add that to, um, you know, just something if I wanted to thicken it up or I wanted the taste of tomato or whatever, it'll make like a powder. And with that roasted skin, it's gonna be really, really good. So that's just one last thing. I know it's not, it's like outside of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, but um, yeah, that's, just something I wanted to add. So just to recap the month of August, um, I had planned on taking everything out and setting it on the table, filling up the table with all of the stuff that, that I had put away or put up. And, um, I've really been working hard on getting my house straightened up and I just, I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just couldn't bring myself to drag all that stuff out. However, um, I know we put up, we put up tons of, um, tomato sauce. We, um, we did roasted crushed tomatoes, not in August. That was recently. Um, and we still have tomatoes to put up. We made cowboy candy and candy peppers and pickles and let me think grape jam what else do we have in there um lots of chicken broth um and that was all from the um all of the meat birds that we harvested the 46 meat birds or 47 however many it was um and we have all of that in the freezer i have a bunch of lard in the free or in the fridge and um Let's see, we've got green beans. We've got two different kinds. String, what are it, pole beans, Kentucky pole beans, and then Roma green beans. Um, let's see, there's more tomato sauce. I have, to, I have a lot of tomato sauce, but we go through a lot of tomato sauce. Um, we make chili and spaghetti, and we have spaghetti sauce too. Um, and I have, I think, about three gallon size bags of green beans. No, four gallon size bags of green beans in the freezer. Um, and I have more green beans coming off that I'm, I need to go out and pick tonight when I get home from work. Um, and then I have a bunch of things that I've dehydrated. Um, peppers and stuff. We've actually started using them. I made chili last night and um, we started using them in our cooking and i have dried elderberry that's all i can think of off the top of my head um and i know you know like there's plenty of people out there that have way more stuff that they did than what i have um but i'm i'm telling you this is like i don't know 50 times more than what i had last year so if you're getting into this if you're starting to homestead and you think i've never grown a garden before 
I've never raised an animal before. I don't know that I can do this. You can totally do this. This is our first year of having a successful garden. And um, this is not our first year raising animals, but we're still kind of new to this. We don't know everything. And, um, you know, we had an issue with Curly a few weeks ago. And I probably ought to make a, I probably ought to make a video about that. But, um, you know, we don't, we don't have all of the answers. It's pretty much, we just kind of like put out fires as they come along, but, um, you can totally do this. And, um, and I'll tell you what changed for me, um, especially with our garden, because I hadn't been successful with gardening before and we still had fails on our garden this year. But the thing that changed with me was that, um, I just kind of adopted this attitude of, I'm not giving up. Like, I don't care if I kill everything <laughs> that I put in the ground. God, I hope I don't. But I don't care if I kill everything I put in the ground. I'm not giving up. I'm just going to plant something else and try something else and um, hopefully get a harvest out of that. And, you know, I kind of I kind of feel like that that is what changed. Because instead of looking for the negative, because when you're looking for the negative, you're going to find the negative. If you're looking for you know, people around you to let you down, they're going to let you down. You'll find exactly what it is you're looking for. So, um, instead of looking for the negative, as far as our homestead was, I started looking for the positive. And, you know, I was just like, like, geez, I had a whole, um, big area of potatoes that failed and it completely failed because of my fault, because I didn't take care of it the way that I should have, but I just planted them somewhere else. And guess what? Those potatoes are coming up. Those plants are huge and doing well. And, um, and now I'm getting ready to go out and plant um, a fall garden and hopefully have some lettuce stuff and romaine and, and kale and carrots and stuff like that that I can harvest through the fall. So um, don't give up. Just get that in your head. Don't give up. Yeah, God bless you. Have a great day.